Why are English players in the Premier League so expensive? Honestly, it's bonkers. Mason Mount and Declan Rice from this season, Jack Grealish and Calvin Phillips from last season. The numbers that are going for English footballers are very silly. Let's stay on the right side of the algorithm. I think there's three reasons for this, so watch on to find out why. The first reason is pretty simple to understand. Nobody wants to sell to their rivals if they can help it. Now, the perfect example for this is Mason Mount wanting a move from Chelsea to Manchester United and it doesn't look like it's going to happen, and it doesn't feel like that's his fault. He's only got one year left on his contract, which in theory means that they should be selling him for a lower value to stop him going for free to Manchester United next year. However, the Blues having a bad time last season means that they're more inclined to try and weaken an opponent rather than take 50-something million pounds, especially when they've got a ridiculously rich owner. However, this phenomenon doesn't apply to every single player that wants to leave a big club. Think about Kai Havertz, for example. I think Chelsea sold him for something like 65 million pounds to Arsenal? And Mount being only £10 million less when he's only got one year left on his contract feels like it makes no sense to me. However, it started making sense when I thought about reason number two that English players cost so much in the Premier League. That would be the mysterious and ever-confusing homegrown quota. Premier League rules can be incredibly confusing for an outsider to look at. You need 25 players, but there's a maximum of 17 from abroad. That means there's eight spots that have to be homegrown footballers, or you're not allowed to register anyone in them. And of course, when you're a Premier League club and you've only got so many spots to fill, you want to fill them with the best talent available, and that means someone that's probably playing for England right now. That explains why Calvin Phillips, despite not playing this season, cost about 50 million quid last season. There's a hell of a lot of demand for these players, but not much supply, and that drives the prices higher and higher and higher and higher, especially if it's a club in the Premier League that's selling to you. And it's Premier League clubs that bring us up to point number three, which is selling club revenues. In essence, this amounts to whether or not the selling club actually needs the money. Take West Ham, for example. Arsenal and Man City are both interested in buying Declan Rice from West Ham, but they're in the Europa League, they won the Europa Conference League last year, they're in the Premier League, which means there's a lot of revenue anyway, and the fact they won a title last year means they'll get a lot more sponsorship money. Since there's all this cash coming in, they don't need to jump at the first opportunity to sell a player. Take relegated clubs as another example. Leeds United might have to sell Crescencio Somerville for less than his release clause. And even though this is a transfer window packed with midfield interest, James Ward-Prowse hasn't had a single club come in for him yet. Now, Southampton might just have to bite at what they think is below his value purely because they don't know if another bid's going to come. In conclusion, there's just a perfect storm of expensiveness around English players in the Premier League, which means that clubs that are looking for players like Declan Rice, Mason Mount, Harry Kane have to pay exorbitant prices for players that you could get the same quality elsewhere. Hope that's answered your question. Remember to like and subscribe, comment if you've got any more questions, and check out our articles on Last Word on Football. We think they're really good. See you later.